Hi, good morning, everybody. It is Friday of the first week of digital learning, and you made it. So congratulations. Um, I am going to pop on here, and we're going to quickly, I'm going to show you um, what we're going to be talking about next week during your art time. Thank you for your patience. So our schedules should be cleared up and figured out. And um, so I will now be able to take you, you all were in one big virtual classroom, virtual five and virtual six. So now I'm gonna be able to take you and put you into your smaller class groupings. And that will give us our guidance as far as our meet time, because I can't have a virtual meeting with like 150 kids, that would be a little bit much. You wouldn't get to talk, you wouldn't get to say anything. And that's kind of the point of having a Google Meet. So um, this weekend, I'm going to print out all of those rosters and I'm going to put you all in your individual classrooms and uh, accept that. So whenever you're, whenever you go into Google Classroom and you see all your little, you, all of your little squares with all your classrooms, go ahead and accept it and join. Um, let me click on this next screen. Okay. So your new classroom will have a header that looks like this. And if it's AAMS, it'll say AAMS. I just named it Barker Art Massey. And then the time that we're going to, the Monday period three. So I kind of am trying to put all the information you need to know in the top so that it keeps myself and it keeps you, um, kind of clear on what you're looking at. This little number is for me. That's for me so that I can connect what I have in classroom and the people I have in classroom with the stuff that's on our attendance system. And then the time is right here that our meet time will be. Your meet time is going to be different. I just took this is, I just took this little screenshot so that you could see what, um, what, it's going to look like, but it, whatever art time is on your schedule, that is what is going to be up here. Now down here, generate meet link. I will do that, um, before your meet time and there will be a meet link there. And then, so this class M3, the first class I'm going to see on Monday at nine 35, when they go in their classroom, there will be a link here and you can click on it. Okay. I'm going to try something. I've been doing research because I want to be the best digital teacher that I can be for you. So um, I am going to try to log on to my meet five minutes before the actual meet time. This is going to be this is going to be a learning experience for me because but I hate when everybody's scrambling to get to that meet at a specific time and it's just kind of stressful and you're waiting for the teacher to log on or you're, you know, you're just sitting there. So I'm going to try to have this, uh, wait screen on and it's going to have a timer and that timer will count down. And once the timer gets to zero, then we'll begin our meet. Okay. So I think this will be good if it's, and here's the thing with, with what we're doing and with digital learning, if anything doesn't work for us, we can change it. We can do it differently, but we've got to try it um, so that we'll know, so that we'll know if it works for us. Um, if, in the beginning, I love hearing you all talk. It's like my favorite thing. But when we first start a meet, I need you to mute your mic, um, especially if your class is really big and you won't know if your class is big or not until you get in your first meet and you can kind of see how many kids are joined in there. Some of you are in sections that are smaller and it's no big deal. And some of you, you're in really big sections and we might need to just, we might need to space you out a little bit because if you want to be able to talk and share, then that's, you know, the, I feel like the smaller grouping of kids, the better. Okay. Um, if you want to open an, open an extra tab, uh, other than our Google me, you can open up an extra tab. And if you want to have classroom open in the background, you can have that open and wait and ready and waiting for us so that if I log in and talk about something, you could be looking at it too. Um, the wait patiently, be really patient because we're all just trying to get in a rhythm. And as soon as we have our rhythm, it's, this is going to be really great. Okay. 
but we're all kind of, we're kind of struggling. And I knew that that this first week was going to be a struggle. Um, if it hasn't been for you, that's awesome. If, if it has been, you're where I'm, I'm there on the same page with you. Um, I wanted to give you a chance to meet your core teachers and kind of, kind of develop a rhythm with your core teachers before you started adding a whole bunch of stuff in. Cause like your days look really busy. Okay. So that's why I wanted to hold off, um, doing Google meets until we can kind of get this figured out. All right here, the agenda. So I am going to post an agenda here and that'll be what you can look at it before we get into the meet. So you can kind of see what, we're going to be talking about um, when we meet next week. I'm going to just kind of introduce myself. We'll kind of get used to each other. I'll walk you through the classroom live. I'll take you through. I'll show you where everything's going to be. And then I will go. Um, we'll, I'll open it up to questions and I will help you. I can help you organize and I can help you kind of get everything figured out. And if you have questions, you can ask them then. Now, I do ha I have a virtual homeroom. Do you guys know that? Every morning. Every morning I meet with the same group of kids. And one of the first things I told my groups of kids is that you need to have one of these. You need to have a post-it or you need to have a piece of paper. Or I have a student in my homeroom that has a whiteboard, you know, that you can like erase. You need to have that handy so that when you're working in your classroom and if you're not with your teacher, if you have a question it'll be here so that you can remember. Here's what happens to me. I have a question and then I get up and do something and then my brain deletes it and I don't, I don't remember to ask it. So if you have a question, please feel free to ask me during our question time and our help time. So here's a bigger, here's a bigger picture of what like a Barker classroom would look like. Um, remember your, your time and your class code. Okay, and I'll walk you, we'll talk about this on whatever day I'm meeting with you. Um, Google Classroom Tips. Here is something that I want to share with you guys. This kind of maybe a lot of information. Maybe I need to do this in two videos. I don't know. Um, notifications. So, you know, whenever somebody does something in Classroom, it sends you a notification. I hate that. Um, so I always turn mine off. I can show you how to do that. I'll show you how to do that in Google Classroom um, if you if you do not like that. Uh, in the spring, when I was helping my son, I would toggle over to his email and he would just have hundreds of emails. And I'm like, we can't, you can't manage that because if somebody sends you a significant email, it's going to be in this, it's going to be in this just huge stack of stuff. So I can show you how to turn that off. Check your classrooms, classwork tab, each day for assignments. So my my thinking is you're going into classroom and you're looking at things every day. Do you need to see the notifications? I don't know. You, you kind of need to decide that for yourself. But I know for me, I don't need to, I don't need to see that because I'm going in there and I'm actively looking and searching and stuff and, and being in there. So, um, once you do an assignment, I had tons of kids do this in the spring and, um, my son also did it as well. He would do his assignment, but he wouldn't turn it in. You've got to hit the turn in button or the submit button. You know, after, you know, when you go back to the assignment, you have to click submit. Um, last week was it's probably was probably pretty frustrating it for some of you get in a routine with each classroom so the way that your teacher conducts her google meets and shares information with you it, it's going to be slightly different probably because everybody has a different personality um so try to get into a routine with each classroom and each teacher and you know what we're all in this together and so if it's, if it's a struggle for you some days, or if you need to take a break, like, I think that's okay. We're all just learning together. Okay. Here's how I work my email. And I don't, I don't know if you need to use your email like this, but, um, I'm going to kind of go over it. When I come into work first thing in the morning, I pull up my email 
And I want to see in my email if there's anybody that needs anything from me. If there are any emergencies or if there's any questions, I need to see that. So the first thing I do when I turn my computer on is check my email. Some things that are in my inbox you look at and you can tell aren't important. And so I'm able to just delete them. Like sometimes I'll accidentally get on a weird mailing list and get something from someplace. We, you, you probably have a really good filter on your email uh, because you are a student. So you probably don't get junk email like some adults do. Um, so I check my email. I delete things that I can. I use my email as a to-do list. I don't um, just let stuff sit there. One time it was, I remember it was like at Christmas and, um, my mother-in-law, she needed me to do something on her cell phone cause she doesn't, she's not very technologically savvy. So she handed me her cell phone and she had over 10,000 unread emails. So it's like, you know, when you sign on, you know, like when you see your little email logo on, it's like, it said 10,000. I thought I was like, Whoa. So, um, that's a little overwhelming. I, how I, you, well, you work mine. Let me quickly toggle over here. I shouldn't have anything. I should have, oh, I don't know if you can see. I'll show you live when, I'll show you live when I'm in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, I create labels for each class that I have and I create labels for, for specific things. Um, like I'll have AAMS and then I'll have AAMS art and I'll have Barker art. So yours may say yours could be a teacher name or yours could be like science, literacy, math, and then you would be able to move all those emails over. So once you've opened an email, you've completed it, you've responded, or you can delete it. It's like a decision you have to make. It's like, do I have to do something with this email? Do I need to respond to this email or can I move it? You know, when you're, when you've, when you've made your decision, move it over and it's always going to be there. And I'll show you how you can uh, search. And when you guys have, um, when I have you in my email, I'll have everything cleared out that so that you don't see anything confidential. Okay. So I would never do that, but um, I'll, and you won't be able to see any student information on my email, but I'll, I'll show you how to search and, um, stuff like that. When sending an e an, a teacher an email, include as much information as you possibly can. So it isn't like a chat email is not chat. So when you're sending an email and it goes to the other person, it's almost like a letter. It's kind of like email was like, and if you look, at the icon for the email, it's a little envelope, like a letter. A chat is when a person is sitting on the other side of the computer and they're on there and they're logged in and they're live. So a lot of the people that you'll be emailing, they are not, they're not sitting looking at, at their computer. Okay. They're with other students. So when you send an email, you have to have that expectation that the person on the other end will respond to you as soon as they can. So, if it's an emergency, if the first, the first response you want back from them is like a resolution, you want something fixed, you need to be sure that you include as much information in your email as you possibly can. And I thought I would type a example email for you when we're together next week. So if you're emailing a teacher about an assignment, you need to reference the assignment, what it is, what it's called, maybe the date that it was assigned, the specific problem or issue that you have, and then ask for a resolution on how to fix it, how to fix your problem. I can't, I get emails a lot that are just really casual. Like it'll say something like, what do I do? And I'm like, whatever you need to. Um, so you need to, you need to be very specific in what the information that you're asking for and kind of what you want to happen. And then you'll be happier when they respond, because if you send a really vague email, what do you think the teacher is going to say? The teacher is going to respond. What assignment are you talking about? 
what exactly are you having trouble with? And then it has to wait on you to respond back and then for them to respond back. So if you, the more you get better at this, the more efficient that you're going to be, it's going to be awesome. Um, but that's just a, that's just something I've experienced. Uh, digital safety really quick because you are online and like, I will be, I will put videos in the classroom for you to see. I'll make videos. I'll link a YouTube video, but sometimes I might be like, Hey, research <clears throat> an artist or research something. And you're looking up images. Um, the, the filters and the, the things on your school computer are set to, for your safety. So it's going to walk out a lot of stuff that's inappropriate or not good for kids to look at, but, um, sometimes some things may slip through. Okay. If you see something suspicious or something weird, don't click on it because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if it's going to be like a virus that will attack your computer or it, it might be, it just, it might bring up something that is inappropriate. So just don't click on it. If it's, if it's not something that you're used to seeing or school related, don't click on it. Okay. Um, never write or send anything that you wouldn't want an adult to see. Everything that you send on your computer, your the emails, um, the things that you do in Google classroom, it's, I don't want to say the word recorded, but it's able, you're, it's able to be researched. Okay. So I think that's a positive thing because, um, if a student is, is troubling another student, or if there's an issue, then the, then we're able to research it and resolve it. But, um, I just want you to be aware that, you know, just be, just do what you're supposed to do, um, and follow the rules and then you will be fine. Everything will be fine. Okay. If someone that you don't know tries to communicate with you or is negative towards you, I would not respond and let an adult like your parents or guardians or somebody at home and the teacher know so that we can help you navigate that situation. I don't think that you should be able to easily have contact with people, but I just want to be super safe. Don't contact, don't communicate with somebody that you, that is suspicious that you don't know. All right. Just for your safety. And then four, um, never share your passwords with like classmates or people that may want to do something that may try to do something negative. Um, but you have, you have to, with your parents, like I know that like my son would, I would have his passwords because he's seven, he's seven, you know, it had, he has a hard time remembering a lot of his passwords. So, um, it's okay for your parents to have it. Um, that's a lot. I feel like that's a lot of stuff to, to cover and talk about. And if you have any, remember I told you post-its, if you have any questions or problems, write them down. And we're just going to get used to next week talking in the meet. Um, it depends on how many kids are in the meet. We It may be more functional to use the chat section. So if you have a question, we can answer it in the chat. Um, we just want to cut down on if the more people that are on it, there's a lot of background noise. Okay. And then when there's more background noise, it's hard to hear. And we want to hear your voice. So I thank you for watching. This video is going to be posted in the old virtual classroom, and then I'm going to put it in your new virtual classroom. So it'll be both places. And then um, we will meet next week and kind of get all this stuff lined out. And then the next week we'll get rocking and rolling. We'll be doing some art. Okay. All right. I hope you have an awesome weekend. Get some rest. Okay. I want you to get some rest, have some fun, and then come back refreshed on Monday. I hope that I will be refreshed on Monday. All right. I hope you have a great weekend.